Welcome to Land the House, I'm Seth. Thank you so much for watching. This is a hydraulic ram pump. It's a water pump that requires no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing and falling water. So basically, for every one foot of fall that comes into the pump, it will lift seven feet out. This is a pretty typical design right here, but check this out. It's the craziest ram pump you've ever seen. So I was thinking, uh, what happens if you need to pump water to two different hills at the same time and you don't want to run two ram pumps? Would it be possible to have a single waste valve that fed two different spring valves and pressure tanks? So that's what we're going to do today. Let's head up to the shop and I'll show you how I constructed this. We'll come back out here and see if it works. All right, here's how I built this thing. I've got a one inch ball valve with a couple of one inch nipples to a threaded T which goes up to the check valve, comes over to another T which then cuts off to these 45s into some reducers down to half inch and uh, these half inch uh, spring valves, some more half inch T's and then over to the ball valves at the end there. So let's go ahead and just quickly assemble this thing and I will uh, tighten it down. I went ahead and put some uh, Teflon tape on all these threaded pieces, even though it's not 100% necessary. I'll have to use some one inch pipe in here to angle this off to these pieces, but for now, let's just see if this will stay in here without having any glue. I may have to come back and uh, glue these in here if it doesn't want to stay. The pressure tanks will come off of these T's right here. I couldn't find any small pieces of one inch pipe so I had to cut down some conduit. Not ideal but at least it'll work here in this test. Let's go ahead and get these pressed in here. May have to come back and glue these if the pressure is great enough. I don't anticipate that it will be though. Yeah. Okay. That's a wild looking pump there. I hope it works. So the ball valve hooks up to the one inch drive pipe and we have our single one inch swing valve that will split and go into the secondary valve which is on both sides. We can build up in the pressure tank on both sides and go to the output. So my setup is going to be from this five gallon bucket which has my float valve in it to keep this bucket full for our test. The water comes from the uh, spout over there which is actually coming from my water tanks up on top of the hill which comes from my ram pump <laughs> down in the creek. Anyway, all that to say, this is going to be a, about a four foot drop or so from the bucket down this 20 foot pipe to our specialized ram pump here. And then I'm going to have two garden hoses. One goes up here to my wobbler sprinkler and the other hose I've got here. I'm just going to take up the hill a ways and see if we can get enough back pressure there. And that should give us an example of whether or not this dual ram pump system is going to work. So let me go ahead and connect my garden hoses. I just brought a couple of adapters down here and we will go ahead and get this test underway. So this is what I hope happens. As the pump cycles, it will send a pressure wave that is fairly equal to both sides so that this lower uh, sprinkler here and the hose going over the four-wheeler shed will have the same output even though one is a lot higher than the other. So let's go ahead and close our valve here and fill the bucket, the source bucket. Like I said, that's coming over here from my ram pump water. Let's flip that on. And I need to make a better uh, source holder than the stairs here. So that's just going to fill up until the bucket is full and then it will shut off here. Here 
we can go ahead and let some of the air out of the drive pipe. Okay. All right, that should let any air bubbles escape up here in the bucket. As our water source is filling here, if you have a ram pump, you need to make sure that the drive pipe has no air in it. What's happening is water comes down from the source and slams this waste valve closed, which creates the water hammer, and that sends a pressure wave back up to the source and then back down again, and it cycles over and over again. But what happens if there's air in the pipe is this cycle will find that air bubble and think it's the source and come back. And it reduces the uh, efficiency or just stops the pump altogether. Okay, our bucket just stopped up here, which means we are ready for this test. I need to tighten this valve a little bit. I'm seeing that uh, some water is leaking out from the threads down here. Okay, now we're ready. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And it's gonna start cycling on its own because I've got the delivery pipes both closed. So the hope is, as water is cycled out of this, it will then turn on our float valve up here and let the pump just continually run forever and ever, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and open this. It's gonna stop the pump most likely due to uh, back pressure loss. So basically, as it's filling the pipe, the uh, pressure has dropped here enough that it's not gonna cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here so that the water will match the source bucket. So the height that's up here, it will match as it fills these lines up here. Now to help those lines fill, I'm gonna go ahead and just cycle the pump a few times and it's going to push that pressure into those lines. The pump was using a bit more water than I wanted it to, so I tilted the waste valve just a touch, and that reduces the efficiency, but also reduces the amount of water required to run the pump. If I were in a creek, I wouldn't care, but I wanted to make sure my bucket could keep up with itself. Okay, the pump is working just fine, and the bucket is keeping up with it, which is great. And I just saw that the output up here at the sprinkler has begun. And let's see what kind of flow rate we're getting. <laughs> Not enough to do any sprinkling, but uh, it definitely is producing water up here. Now let's go up to the Shelter Logic tent and see if that has an output yet. Shouldn't be too long here. Let's see. That seems full right there. Let's see where we are over here. Okay, I think it's full right there. So it's within just a moment or two from having an output over here. Just started getting water out here at the top. I have to say that currently the flow rate is significantly less than it is down at the sprinkler. I'm wondering if the pressure difference behind the orange hose valve versus the black hose valve is enough that the water still wants to go on the easier path. It makes sense, because um, if you go down here and look at the flow rate of this sprinkler, it is still putting out significant more water than up there. I love testing these ram pumps. Well, let's turn this off before my perfectly manicured yard gets too saturated. And let's go ahead and shut the water off over here. Okay. I can already tell that I'm really gonna enjoy having this float valve on my water source because that test right there required a lot of water. You can see it probably used, uh, I'm gonna say 40, 50 gallons just now to run that test. And uh, it's just flooded down over here. Uh, so if I were to try and run that same test with this limited source, I'd have had to come over here and just constantly hold the hose in here. So 
this float valve is going to be really awesome for this test. Okay, so what did we learn on testing out this dual ram pump, the craziest ram pump you've ever seen? Uh, water is still going to try and find the easiest path, is what I'm finding. So this valve over here was producing a lot more water than this one was because the pressure pushing back down on the valve was greater because of the about 10 foot difference between the sprinkler over here to the, uh, the four-wheeler shed. Uh, so the water just wanted to go this way because it was less pressure behind it. And uh, so my thoughts are if you need to pump water to two different sides of a mountain, install a float valve on the lower side. What that's going to do is shut off kind of like what our supply bucket has done right now. So when this water supply shuts off, it's going to divert all of your water to the other side. Uh, so you could actually continue to use a single ram pump with a Y connector such as this right here. It would be way simpler than having to build this contraption. You would just put that right after your pressure tank and you would let the float valve at the top of the system determine where the water is going. That does mean that you will have most of the water going to the lower side first before it goes up to the top. Or if there's enough of a difference between the lower and the higher um, outputs, all the water is going to go to the lower one until it shuts off and diverts the water over to the top one. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little experiment. It's one that I've wanted to do for a while and just never got around to. Um, but it did show some really important information that even with a bigger valve reducing down to smaller output, it's still going to have water traveling to the easiest route. So, Now, that being said, if you are intrigued by the ram pump, I do make four different sizes available at landhouse.com, Amazon, and on eBay. They're going to be uh, just your single straight piped model here. But if you need to pump water uphill using no fuel, no electricity, then definitely check those out. Hit that thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this, and be sure to subscribe. I post lots of videos. I think the channel is up to uh, 1,100 as of today-ish, so a bunch of videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Johnson with Land House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.